um, first of all, I would just like to say thank you to each and every person who's come here. Um, I feel humble and honored that you're here to listen. I just hope that I can give you something in return. Uh, I met my future husband when I was 40 years old, at a time when I knew it all, I was so good, and, and then I could do action, I could do anything, and I could do everything. I could fight. And then I met a man from whom I knew nothing of his people, I knew nothing of his ways, but I fell in love instantly, and he fell in love with me instantly, and he told me the very first time I ever met him that we would be together. So what happened was that his people have a totally different philosophy of life than what I was accustomed to. And so the first seven years that I was with his people, I said nothing. I said nothing. I could not because I could not understand how they could sit back and just be. And how this whole idea of just being was going to solve things. But through the years and watching this and seeing it and learning, I thought, wow. <coughs> now the native people, the Cree people from the, the, who, who I was with, they have a true democracy where traditionally there were no elections. <coughs> elections often lead to many, many things that are not nice. But everyone in the community had a say. And whenever there was conflict, everyone, everyone had discussion and had the input. And everyone listened to everyone else. And it was only when it came to a consensus that anything would be enacted or could be enacted. But knowing that it had to be consensus, and the difficulty in reaching that, everyone had to have respect for one another and one another's ideas. Because otherwise, it could go on forever and ever and ever. So on the political level, on that level, there had, of course, this conflict. Of course, there was differences of ideas. But the talk would continue, and the respect for each person's ideas would continue and carry on until they all came to the same conclusion. And at that point, then you get total, total support. Because you have everyone, everyone on your side. And everyone is in the same, same place. And so in the planning stage, if you want to call it that, if, if that is when the discussions would happen. And they would come up, one person would say, well, I think we should do A, B, C, D, and E. Next person may say, knowing full well, they don't agree with the maybe A, but not the rest of them. Um, yeah, yeah, I, I really think, yeah, A is really a good idea. Um, and I can really support that. Um, uh, perhaps we could just look at la di da and then they would come up with only their ideas. Always they talk in the first person singular. I think, I feel. Always, always, always. There was never any, well, I don't agree with you. No. They would always talk about their idea about what the solution might be. <laughs> and so therefore, it was never confrontatious. Never confrontatious. And I saw this operate, this in operation even today. This is the way they operate. And I just sit back and I marvel, I marvel at how they can come to those kind of, the kinds of conclusions.
conclusions that they did with no conflict, no bad feelings, nothing, nothing. But I think one of the key things that, that Native people do um, is they never, never start any kind of a meeting, no matter what type, no matter what, without prayers, without bringing the spirituality into their life oh. and into what's happening. Yes. And so it becomes a respectful and holistic process, no matter what the issue is. And the first time I saw this, there was the issue of drug and alcohol abuse. And everyone went around the circle and they talked about where they were at professionally and also where they were at as a mother, a father, a brother, a sister, from their perspective and what their solutions might be. Never to say anyone else is wrong, but from that, there was a beautiful report came through and, and a direction, and a direction for action. So this was on a, this is on a, on a global level, but I will just briefly, if I have time, relay um, a small story about uh, what happened on a personal level. And uh, when I first came into the Native community, and uh, I had no idea who this beautiful man was, but it turned out he was an elder, a spiritual leader, a leader of ceremonies, and a leader of prayers, and all of these things that were very confusing for me to start with. Believe me, it took time before I ever really, really got it here. And also, because of his status within his community, many people had a problem with me being white because of our history of colonization and all the horrible things that have happened. And so often I would be representing that because I was the only white person around. <coughs> and so on both sides, on both sides, on both my family, my friends, and on his family and his friends, many people had an issue with us being together. Many people did not. The traditional, people who knew who they were and who they had no problem with me whatsoever and they saw because they see heart and my heart was in the right place and they saw that but the people who are younger and perhaps a little nah this rah rah but hey there's all types in every community um really have a problem so one day, there was one lady who was particularly angry with me being there, would not allow me to attend any of the ceremonies if she was there. Uh, was the only person who did that. Uh, she phones Raven and she says, my late husband, and she says, you know, she said, Kakaku, that was his name in Cree. Um, I, I really, really need this medicine. Can I come to your house? And I thought, uh, okay, whatever. Uh, but I was not looking forward to it because she had been particularly not nice. And so, anyway, she comes and knocks on the door, her and her husband, and um, he says, Come in, come in. Niwa, that means wife. Put food on the table. We have guests. We have to give them the best we have. Put Make some lunch. Give them all everything we have. So, okay, fine. It was in my silent time. I made lunch. I served lunch. And I'm here, okay. And I was laying to some carpet. And it was a piece of carpet there. And she says, My, that's a lovely piece of carpet. I have plans for that carpet. But my husband immediately picks it up and he says, It's yours. And I thought, Oh. So in Vaughn preparing lunch, he takes them outside, and we had just purchased a farm, and there were many, many good stuff there on this farm. And I see them loading up all of these good things into their, into their truck, and I'm thinking, oh my, what is this? So they come back in the house, we fed them, it was time to go, and my husband, he pulls out the last hundred dollars that we had, and it says, here, this is for you. And like I said, it was 
was in my side of the time, and I could not understand this whatsoever. So after they left, I asked them, what are you doing? We do not even have enough money to get into town, and you have to go to work tomorrow. We have no gas for the car, and now we have no money. And he says, no, don't worry, it'll come. Oh, he said, watch, this will pay off. He said, it will pay off. Well, let me tell you, uh, it has. In, in, in spades, so you have no idea. In about a half an hour, a man came to our door, knocked on the door, and he said, oh, remember you lent me a hundred bucks? There you go. Oh, okay, we had our money back. But this lady, as much as she was against me, after that day, she was so supportive. And I would meet her in the hall, and she would say, Hey, Rita, how are you doing? So nice to see you. And, and yeah, and the people saw this. The people saw this. And so it did pay off in space. It took a long time before I was really accepted within the community. But she was one of the ones that led that whole issue about being accepted. And that is what they do. They are so incredibly generous people. And they, everything that they do is with kindness. With kindness. And believe me, I have seen the pay 